Welcome to the exam room live brought to you by the physicians committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion Chuck Carroll and this is the healthiest half hour anywhere online today. We appreciate you joining us right here on Facebook and on YouTube. Coming up, new data comparing COVID-19 and the flu. It's a head to head analysis, fresh study published just this week. We're going to learn which is deadlier, which carries more symptoms, who is most at risk and breaking down all of the facts and the new data for us is Dr. Neil Barnard. He will be here in just a minute. Plus, we're going to be opening up the doctor's mailbag. So if there's something on your mind that you would like to ask Dr. Barnard, go ahead and post that in the comments or the chats right now. You can always tweet that to us as well at Chuck Carroll WLC or at PCRM. Just make sure it has that hashtag exam room live. Now we're going to be changing things up and getting festive. You know, the holidays are here. And for a lot of us, that means cookies and cakes and sweets and treats and indulgences. And it could also mean a new size come the new year. Well, how can you eat healthy during the holidays? Dr. Nikki Davis is going to be making a house call to keep us happy and healthy as we head into 2021. But we do begin with that new study comparing COVID-19 and the flu. Fresh new data out today. And many believe that COVID-19 and the flu carry equal risk. Well, the new figures, as you're about to hear, are anything but equal. As a matter of fact, you're going to hear about how one of these conditions can even increase your risk of diabetes, even if you've been a previously healthy individual. So to break down all of these new stats and facts for us, please welcome Dr. Neil Barnard to the exam room live. Dr. Barnard, thanks for being here. Sure. Great to be with you, Chuck. You know, if we um, go back in time, we actually had this discussion by, by we, I mean, the, the world was having this discussion when COVID first began. You remember this? It was February, March, and people were saying, don't worry about COVID. It's just the flu. And we deal with the flu every year. Don't worry about it. And this was used as a reason not to do shutdowns of businesses and, and that kind of thing and to really sort of minimize it. Um, and so let me give you a little bit of background to the current study. Let's go back. Let's go back to May. JAMA Internal Medicine published this uh, study that looked at COVID-19 and it compared it to the seasonal influenza. This is mid-May. And what they looked at was how many uh, cases you see. And they were, um, at just as of about May 15th, um, the uh, cases were really much worse for COVID. And then when you looked at deaths, um, it was just absolutely no comparison. When you look at the worst week of influenza deaths, 752 for the flu, 15,000 for COVID. So just really no question. So um, let me uh, unshare, and I want to come back and, and give you the results of this new study and, sh and show you where we are, Chuck. Uh, this, it was published in BMJ, you know, a great journal. Mm -hmm. and, and as you said, it's just brand new. And they looked at influenza and compared it to COVID. And the first difference that you see is that when you get the flu, it's it's really a respiratory issue. When you get COVID, it's, it's that, but it's everything else too. It will attack your heart, it can attack the kidneys. It's, it's much more pervasive in the body. And then you look at the death rates. Um, the latest BMJ figures looked at people who ended up in the hospital. And if you end up in the hospital with influenza, uh, death rates, Mm, about 5%. So if you're sick enough with flu to end up in the hospital, one in 20 isn't going to make it out. But when if you've got COVID and you end up in the hospital, it's not a 5% death rate. It's about 18% death rate. So COVID, again, much worse. Um, are, and, and short of death, um, the likelihood of needing the intensive care unit, about two and a half times higher with COVID. The likelihood of having uh, a requirement that you get ventilatory assistance, about four times higher with COVID. So COVID is... Um, quite variable, just as the as influenza is, but but worse, but much worse overall than influenza. And what you mentioned in the introduction, Chuck, was interesting. There are people who go in the hospital, they've got COVID, they don't have diabetes. They come out of the hospital having uh, improved and they've got diabetes now. Somehow having COVID seems to it's going both ways. We knew that people with diabetes were more likely to need hospitalization. They were more likely to die of COVID. The reverse seems to be manifesting, that COVID seems to be causing diabetes or causing diabetes to manifest. Um, stay tuned. We don't have the details. We don't know if this di 
if this diabetes is, is a variant of type 1, where the insulin producing cells have been destroyed, or type 2, where you got insulin, but the cells are insulin resistant. So stay tuned, we're going to really see. Um, but you, you see two other things. I mentioned kidney involvement, it can be serious with COVID. And you also, you see this peculiar episode of where your blood pressure goes way, way down, uh, hypotension that can be dangerous too. All that stuff comes as part of the COVID package. And last, but unfortunately not the least, is this post-COVID syndrome where people don't feel well physically and they don't feel well psychologically. They don't feel mentally well that kind of drifts on and on week after week. So stay tuned. But for now, um, if a person is comforting themselves saying it's just the flu, uh, if you're lucky, it will be just the flu. But um, for a lot of people, it is much, much worse. And one of the takeaways for me from this study was that the lead author actually concluded specifically talking about diabetes is we don't know if this one is, is reversible or not. Um, right. And they also pointed out like, you know, this time next year or even five years from now, we could still be discovering um, new symptoms of COVID-19, things that we haven't even seen yet. So that's kind of what makes this virus and this pandemic so tricky to navigate. Yeah, and it's gonna stay tricky because in the same way as influenza, mutates. You know, the, the virus doesn't stay the, 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 the same from year to year. It changes, and that's why you have a new influenza vaccine every year, but it also means different kinds of pathogenicity. Uh, some years it's really bad, some years less bad. We're all afraid that that is what's happening with COVID, and it, it, it does seem to be, um, you know, the, the mink uh, experience they're having in Europe, um, and now in this country, where humans are passing the virus to animals, to, to mink on mink farms, the mink are passing it back to humans, slightly modified. So that's what we're all waiting for. Uh, somebody with COVID works in a poultry farm. They work in a pig farm, they work with cows, they work in a live market in New York City. They pass their virus to the animals, the animals pass it back and it's not the same virus anymore. And that's what we've been dealing with with influenza ever since 1918. That's what I think we're gonna be dealing with, with the coronavirus. So it means every year we'll bring a new adventure, unfortunately. And I want to talk uh, briefly about vaccines as well. There's uh, a lot of people who think that this will be a cure-all for everything and this will automatically end the pandemic. But in speaking with you and other experts, even uh, all the way back to when we had Dr. Michael Greger on the show months ago, uh, he was speaking about his book. And, and basically the point, the conclusion that he drew was that even with a vaccine, if we don't change our habits, how we eat, how we industrialize food and all of all of that, we could find ourselves very much back in the same position with a different pandemic right in the future. So the vaccine yeah. can't just be the cure all, right? Um, the vaccine becomes utterly useless when the, when the virus mutates. Um, to, if it mutates to a degree that it can defeat the, the vaccine, that vaccine is dead. Um, we don't know if that'll be the case. Uh, different vaccines attack different targets and it may be that we'll get one that's the silver bullet, but it may not be. The other thing is important to remember that right now what we know is that the vaccine, great, it's, it's very effective. It's, it's really good for stopping the disease symptoms. That doesn't mean you don't necessarily get infected and can't pass the virus along. We're hoping you won't, but for now, the recommendation is even if, if and when you get a vaccine, um, you'll still have to mask up. Um, until we've been able to somehow see the, the reduction of this virus. Because what we believe is probably going to happen is that if you got the vaccine, you will contract the virus. You may even spread it um, while, the, while your immunity is, uh, is doing its thing. All right. Let's go ahead and open up the doctor's mailbag here. We've got a great question from Kenneth. Wants to know if someone is overweight but begins eating a clean plant-based diet overnight, Will their risk for COVID come down automatically and rapidly simply because their diet isn't so inflammatory anymore? Um, that's a terrific question, and we hope so. Um, but we're talking about several things happening at the same time. First of all, your question is, is great in that if a person is concerned about COVID, doing a completely plant-based diet today, now, this minute, and sticking with it is a really good idea because body fat cells express the ACE2 receptor, that's the welcome mat by which the virus enters the body. So if you can contract your body fat volume, that's a really 
good thing to do. That also means that your insulin resistance or even diabetes, if it's come that far, is likely to improve too. And that is um, money in the bank when it comes to repelling the uh, COVID complications. So all of that, all of those are good. But you're implicit in your question is how soon will I be safer? And there we don't really have the answer. What we know now is that people who are in the healthy BMI range do dramatically better than people who are overweight or particularly people who are in the obese category. Um, the sooner we move across those categories, the better, but how soon those benefits kick in, we'll have to see. Uh, and finally, uh, your question about the inflammation, that's for real. Uh, when people go on a plant-based diet, the inflammation in their body diminishes. And by inflammation, what I mean is your white blood cells are constantly creating compounds that get into your bloodstream to try to attack viruses and, and, and so forth, uh, other pathogens. And those compounds create an inflammatory um, environment that, that uh, really does encourage um, lots of problems to, to manifest both physically and mentally. And that process will change very rapidly when a person goes on a plant-based diet. So the answer to that part of your question is yes, the inflammation will calm down quite quickly. And then looking more long-term, going back to the study you were discussing just a minute ago, um, they also discovered, uh, well, basically confirmed what a lot of other uh, doctors had already found out is that uh, those with kidney disease, dementia, and uh, obesity and diabetes, those are the people who are at the highest risk along with those who are 75 and older, but specific to those chronic conditions, much of that can be improved with uh, an improved diet as well, correct? Exactly. Um, a healthy diet is really the basis for dealing with all of these things, including improving immune strength overall. You, need, you may need medical care and by all means get it. Uh, we need to mask, we need the vaccines, we need all of these things. But if we are not getting our diet in gear, and that means a healthy, completely vegan, plant-based diet, um, if, if we're not doing that, then we're, we're really trying to fight the virus with one arm tied behind our back. And really quickly, I want to sneak in a question from somebody who's watching live right now, a person by the name of Mythical watching us on YouTube wants to know, how can you tell if you have an inflamed body? Are there any symptoms there? Uh, there may be symptoms, um, and some of them you're familiar with. Um, uh, there are many inflammatory diseases, the things that you're taking ibuprofen for. Um, ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory. So joint pain, menstrual pain, all of these are inflammatory conditions. Um, doctors sometimes measure inflammation directly. The most common test is called CRP, C-reactive protein. If it's high, you're inflamed. When you make a diet change, as we often do here in research studies, CRP comes right, right down. All right. Dr. Neil Barnard, appreciate your time as always, my friend. We'll talk to you again on Friday. Thank you, Chuck. All right, let's go ahead and switch gears now and get festive here. Let's do a change of pace after the pandemic discussion, uh, because even with everything that is going on, even with 2020 being what 2020 is, it is still the holiday season. And that is a time for laughter and love and celebration with the ones we love, even if we're just celebrating virtually this year. But the holiday season also means those indulgences, the cookies and the cakes and the sweets and the treats, those homemade baked goods that you just love and you probably have eaten since you were a child. We indulge with this and we're eating these rich foods to ring in the new year. And as we usher in the new year, a lot of us will be ushering in a new dress size or a new pant size because of those overindulgences. So how can we celebrate in a healthy manner, still in celebrate the season, feel good about what it is that we're eating, maybe satisfy the sweet tooth still? Let's get some tips for having healthy holidays now with Dr. Nikki Davis. Dr. Davis, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, so, putting on weight, yeah, let, putting on weight during the holidays is not a unique problem. I mean, this is a widespread issue that we have been going, that has been going on since basically the beginning of time. So how can we still celebrate, you know, and, and satisfy that sweet tooth and still uh, avoid putting on those holiday pounds? Right, because we know that the average person does gain about a pound during the holiday season, which if you think about it only being a couple of weeks long, that's quite a bit. And you would think that at the end, when you go back to your normal diet, that that pound 
melts off, but it doesn't, it stays there. So you think that over the years, it really does add up. So I'm not here to say, hey, don't eat all the sweets and the wonderful things and have a horrible holiday. But there are some things you can do to still enjoy the holiday season and eat healthier. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. So the first thing that that actually with COVID kind of helps um, is planning ahead. So a lot of times during the holiday season, people will go to parties, to family gatherings, and that I think is really where we get into trouble because it's foods that you don't know what's in it. It looks yummy. It's easy to grab. You're having a good time and you just you can just overindulge right there. The temptations are right there. So I'm thinking that for most people, they're not going to be going to these gatherings. But if you've been quarantining and you're planning to get together, one of the things that you can do in that uh, circumstance is to plan ahead. So you're going to eat before you go. That's number one. Make sure that you're full on healthy foods before you even get there. And another thing you can do is bring your own dish. So you can bring a healthy dish so that you have something to eat there that you know is safe and that you know is not going to be laden with butter and oil and all those kinds of things. Now, for a lot of people, they're going to be eating at home. So instead of going to these gatherings, they're going to be making these meals at home. And so the main thing is that when you're at home and you've got all these things around you that are possibly going to be something that is unhealthy, you got to get it out of the house. If it's in your house, you're going to eat it. You can ask my husband. If I buy anything that is not healthy, he's going to be eating it. So um, so basically, you got to go through the pantry, go through the fridge, and find those things that you know that you don't have the you know, the ability to say no to when you get really hungry. So we're talking about getting rid of, when you're talking about a plant-based diet, of course, getting rid of all the animal products. So any of the meats and fish and cheeses and milks, uh, eggs, things like that. But if you're already eating a vegan or plant-based diet, getting rid of the vegan butters, the extra oils and things like that. So those are the if, you're, if it's not in your house, you're more likely to not overindulge by using those items. And there are ways that you can substitute. So if you usually have a, a recipe that has oil in it, there are substitutions out there. You can just Google it, but you know, applesauce is one that I use a lot. So there are ways to replace some of those items that you're gonna be getting rid of uh, out of your house. Um, the other thing that you can do is meal plan. So one of the things I like to do is on the weekend, I will sit down and come up with what we're going to eat for the week. So, you know, when we have our favorite things that we eat and pretty, pretty much keep it simple and we pretty much eat the same thing a lot. So one of the things that we'll eat is brown rice with broccoli and tofu. So very, very simple. Maybe put a little soy sauce over the top or something like that. Um, but that could be something that you do twice a week. So think of those healthy meals that you like and repeat them throughout the week and just kind of make a list of what you're going to eat uh, that week. And that way, when you have the plan, you buy the groceries, you have it all ready. You already know what you're going to eat that night. You're not stuck coming home from work or being done with your work day stressed out, tired, not wanting to make a thing. And if you have that plan in place, you already know what you're gonna have, it's, it's much easier. Um, the other thing that I would say is just making sure to keep things simple. So like I said, our family eats pretty simply. And so some of the favorite meals would be like rice and veggies. Uh, we also love to do mashed potatoes uh, with gravy and peas and corn. And there are lots of great healthy plant-based options out there for making gravy. One of our favorites is a McDougal one called the Creamy Golden Gravy. We also do burritos a lot. So that's rice, beans, tomatoes, onions, salsa. That's another really easy one, especially if you've prepared ahead of time and made a bunch of rice, maybe for just a few days. And you, all you have to do is pull it out of the fridge and heat it up. 
Another thing I like, that the, I would theme say, of, I like yeah. the theme of keeping it uh, simple here. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that because, you know, you think back to, to Thanksgiving and we spend so many hours, it seems, in the kitchen trying to whip up this feast and it's just exhausting. So you're talking about really keeping it simple. And to me, that is key. That to me makes me happier more than anything <laughs> heading into the <laughs> heading into 2021 is not having to spend so much time in the kitchen. Well, yeah, when you're looking at complicated recipe that has all these things, you might not even recognize some of the items in the recipe list. It's overwhelming and you're not going to make it. So you've got to really just pare down to the bare minimum for most of your meals. It shouldn't have to have a recipe. It should just be very simple, filling and delicious. And that's that's really how to keep it simple. Tell me about it. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. I just had to throw that no, in there. Fine. I got excited by simplicity. No, <laughs> so what else do you have uh, on your tip yeah, list? For sure. So uh, the other thing is just making sure that you have healthy alternatives. So for instance, my mom makes an amazing stuffing that my grandmother used to make. And I still make it, but I have used some, you know different things in it so that it's healthier. So one of the ways that my grandma used to make it, was she cuts up onions and celery and then browns them in butter over the stove. So what I do is I have a, an amazing nonstick pan. So I do the same thing. I still have the onions and the celery, but I just brown them in my nonstick pan. You could even use water or like a vegetable broth or something like that. But with my nonstick pan, I don't even have to do that. And it's still just as delicious. You know, you still can use the breadcrumbs. They're just, just making sure that they're vegan and it's, it tastes the exact same. It just doesn't have all that extra butter in it that I don't need. Um, the other thing is if you have some favorite recipes, some things that you like to make every year and you struggle because you really want to have them, but they're not the healthiest, there are so many blogs and websites out there where you can look up what, you know, an alternative to whatever it is that you're thinking of making like a gravy, for instance. So that would be another thing. Um, and just making sure that you know what the uh, swap outs are. So there are, again, luckily, this day and age, we have Google, we have a way that we can easily look up ways to swap out things. I mean, we even have egg substitutes now that are amazing. So there are definitely ways to still make those items that you love, but just in a healthier way. Um, I even used to, you know, back before I was eating the more whole food based, I used to cook a lot with the vegan butters and the oils and things like that. And I do not miss it at all. In fact, now if I have that stuff in my food, it's just, it feels overly greasy and gross and it weighs me down. And it's just something that once you make those substitutions, it's actually a lot easier. I hear that substitutions are, are they're they're so key and and I I've learned all about those and I think a lot of people do when they first adopt the plant based diet and they think oh my gosh I'll never be able to eat this or that ever again but then a whole new world of possibilities opens up um, I want to really quickly while we still have a couple of minutes I want to talk to you about some of the things that you have coming up because I know that you have some uh, events and some programs that are not only going to get you healthy uh, for 2021 but I mean, forever more after that. So what do you have coming up? Yeah, so thank you, Chuck. I've got uh, a free event that's coming up in January. So it's going to be January 6th. Uh, and getting together with a, a local plant-based group called Salt Lake Thrive. And we're trying to put on these events. We did another one a couple of months ago on breast cancer. This one is going to be about basically achieving your health goals in the new year. And for a lot of people, that means they want to lose weight, they want to get healthy. And so we're going to do a discussion about how to best handle that in the new year. So that'll be on January 6th. And you can find that on my website. So it's just drnikkidavis.com slash events. Uh, and actually, I'll be coming back on uh, the podcast on the 4th. So a couple of days before that, I'll be seeing you again. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. I, I do have a couple other events coming up too. So the weekend after the free event that we're doing, we're doing a Saturday workshop. So that'll be on January 9th. And that's going to be a fun one that I'm doing with another healthcare provider that's local in Salt Lake City, where I'm from. So the two of us are going to be doing, it's a virtual event still, but we're going to be talking about 
again, how to achieve your goals in the new year, but we're going to also be adding on some food demonstrations, showing some of these easy recipes that you can do at home and kind of figuring out how to either make the switch to plant-based or go from a maybe vegan diet that isn't as healthy to a more whole food plant-based diet. So that'll be on January 9th. And again, that's on my website. And then finally, I've got another, one more event that is in February. So it'll be a virtual plant-based retreat. So that one is going to be February 5th through the 14th. And so it's about a 10 day program where I am going, to, it's gonna be medically supervised. So I will be helping people make the transition to plant-based. And if people are needing medic medication adjustments, I can also do that for them. We're gonna have food demonstrations. In fact, uh, I'm sure you know AJ, she's gonna be teaching a food demo during the event. We're gonna do lots of lectures and food demonstrations. It's gonna be very interactive. People will have a lifestyle coach that will help them not only during the event, but also for an entire year after. So it's a really good way for people who have chronic diseases, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, who want to get off medications. This is a good way for them to make that switch. The other really cool thing about the program is that people will get food. So you get <laughs> fresh meals sent to your home. So couldn't get any easier. So we're going to send the meals to you so that you know exactly what you're going to eat and make that transition really easy. I love that. And the best part of it, you get food. I mean, for goodness yes. sakes, I mean, that, that just <laughs> makes it so much easier, right? Uh, well, I look forward to speaking with you again on the 4th. It sounds like you have a busy start to 2021 coming up. So over the holidays, make sure that you take some time for yourself, put your feet up and just take a deep breath or two. I agree. <laughs> All right, Dr. Nikki Davis, give her a follow on Instagram at Nikki Davis MD. Thank you so very much. We'll talk again soon. Thanks. All right. Big podcast coming out tomorrow. Our sister show had an opportunity to sit down with the authors of Body on Fire talking about everything from specific foods that cause inflammation to insomnia and how a lack of sleep can cause the body to become inflamed and how that inflammation then can fuel chronic illnesses. So how can we improve all of that? Well, I sat down with Drs. Monica Agarwal and Jyothi Rao to talk all about the health challenges. And they also have some great tips of how you can take an honest health assessment of yourself. Is there still room for improvement for the majority of us? I would say absolutely there is. So they're going to tell you how to have that honest conversation and dip into a whole ton of science there. So check that out over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever shows are available. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee and hit that a subscribe button and leave a five-star rating. We would greatly appreciate it. And as we head home today, I want to say thank you uh, for being so kind in the chat room today. I know that COVID can be a hot topic, but you guys carried yourself, even when you have differing opinions uh, with class. And for that, I just want to say personally, uh, on behalf of me and, and no one else, just thank you for, for keeping it classy. It's okay to disagree, but it is never okay to go on a personal attack on another person. So thank you very much for keeping it classy, exam roomies. I wanna say thank you one more time to Dr. Neil Barnard and Dr. Nikki Davis for joining us and to the crew behind the scenes that makes the magic happen. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. And for everyone here at the Physicians Committee, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. We'll talk to you again tomorrow, exam roomies. But until then, stay safe, take a stand, keep it plant-based.